How's it going, people? Samus Lab here, and the update has come by yesterday when I was the Dishonor Among Thieves, and I came out, and the guide is up on the channel, so if you want to do that quest, the guide is there for you. Go and check that out. I'm not going to be covering that at the moment, because, well, it's already done there. But, a bunch of other updates come along with it, and it's kind of unusual, because they don't usually do this kind of thing. And one of those updates was telling us about the player-owned aquarium. So, yeah. Uh, a while ago they did offer the player and aquarium and they set a poll of what type of fish people wanted in there. I'm pretty sure the fish that ended up winning was the... It heals you X amount and then gives you like a regen in your prey or your HP afterwards. So those are the special fish you're going to be able to get via this update that goes alongside with the player and house aquarium. And this right here is the design document from... RuneScape or Jagex even. So let's have a little gander through this then and see if we can get into what the actual update will contain. So the aims for the aquarium itself is going to be medium content size, uh, deliver skill content at mid to high levels for fishing and construction, deliver an attractive new player and house room, allow players to find and collect the contents of their aquarium, offer a new fish type as per the player poll, uh, deliver reward systems that other game content can plug into, and allow a player to have more control over the RNG of fish collection and offer content for maxed players to partake in. So those are the aims. So first up is golden fish eggs. Uh, this is going to be a bit of RNG. Basically at 99 fishing you will have to spend roughly 3 hours give or take in order to obtain a gold fishing egg. Or a gold fish egg. And basically I'm pretty sure there's going to be a different golden egg for each individual fish. So as you can see here, these are the fish they're on about. So trout, salmon, tuna, rainbow fish, lobster, leaping trout, swordies, lava eels, leaping salmon, monkfish, leaping sturgeon, shark, cavefish, and rocktails. So catching any of these between a period of your very first fish and three hours later, you should hopefully get a golden fish egg, and you can take that over to your player own house and, well, basically hatch it, and they'll start swimming around in your aquarium in essence. However, there are methods of increasing the chance to actually obtain a golden fish egg. So there is that. So the golden fish eggs will be untradeable, and they're aware that not all fish lay eggs, but they'll call them eggs for the sake of clarity. Players cannot obtain duplicate golden fish eggs to ensure that a player always gets something new. Golden fish eggs should be taken to the bathysphere, which will be in your player own house, to permanently unlock the fish and allow it to swim about in your tank. So there we go. You can even gain the golden fish egg even if you haven't built an aquarium yet. So two things to try and help alleviate the massive weight in for the golden fish eggs is prawn balls and prawn crackers. So these things are going to be items you will randomly obtain after you fished for a certain period of time. So it will randomly happen as you're fishing. You'll obtain one of these. And the prawn balls and prawn characters will contain a number of rewards that increase your chance of obtaining the golden fish eggs and offer objects for your player own aquarium. The difference between the balls and the crackers is simply that the ball can be opened by yourself on your dug. And the crackers will require a second person in order to open, but both of you will gain the bonus from the cracker. There's also a 1 in 10 chance that a ball will instead be a prawn cracker. So there we go. To encourage continued fishing though, a player also gains prawn perks. And when they have earned a total number of prawn balls and crackers, the player is given one prawn perk at one prawn ball or crackers, then 20, and then after you've attained 100 of them, and then when you've attained 200 of them. The player's total number of prawn items will be viewable as a right-click option on the prawn item itself, and the player can toggle prawn items on or off at any point from the prawn bogus in the player owned house aquarium, or by right-clicking the ball or cracker. Yeah. So, in essence, you'll gain perks once you obtain your first prawn item, then at 20, then at 100, then at 200, and you'll gain perks from it, which we'll get into later on in the document. So, the prawn ball drop table... Uh, the prawn item drop tables are as follows. There is a 50 in 200 chance that prawn penny, a consumable item that increases your chance of finding gold fish, chances becoming 1 in 2 hours rather than 1 in 3, and will last for 25 fish then disappears on the player's imagery. The prawn pennies cannot be stacked. There is a 20 in 200 chance that a random 1 to 5 cooked barren sharks will appear. Uh, kelp. Boiler tanks, mermaid purses, portholes, messaging a bottle, 
shark bung jaw. Yeah, obviously we've got no idea what half of this stuff does. But yeah, you can get a Virago statue, that'd be nice. All in all, you can gain quite a few items then, so there's quite a few here. So, Anchor, Prone Pound, Treasure Chest, Cannon, White Wolf Mountain, no idea. Virago statue, Sea Troll Egg, Fishing Guild Trophy, Tribal Mask, Stonehead, the Gold Fishing Egg, and the Craggers. I'm assuming half of these items here are probably something you can actually put into the aquarium itself to make it look better. I'm assuming that's what these things are. The boiler tank, porthole, message in a bottle, shark bone jaw, and ship figurehead are all tradable, and all other items are untradable. When a player has gained an aquarium object and unlocked it at their aquarium, they cannot gain it again from a cracker or ball. Instead, they get a replacement prawn penny. The aquarium and surface aquarium items will be discussed later in the document. Prawn pounds, goldfish eggs, and gold prawn crackers will be added to the motherload more drop table. A player will only receive prawn items if they have an aquarium in the player own house, though. So, surface aquarium. Apparently there's more than one kind of aquarium. The playroom house element of the aquarium update is in fact two rooms, a surface dry room and an underwater aquarium that thematically sits below the surface room. The proposed layout can be seen above. So basically that. You're going to have a room with a giant hole in the centre, which will be your aquarium, and then there will be another room which you can jump into that giant hole, and you'll actually be inside said aquarium. So there you go. The aquarium can only be built on the ground floor of your player owned house. It counts as one room, and a player can only have one aquarium per house. The aquarium is unlocked at 63 construction, and costs 200k in order to unlock. Hotspots are unlocked at the construction levels of 63 to 81. Players can visit other players' aquariums. They cannot exhaust the locations within another player's aquarium, however. More on this later. The service aquarium includes the following, five hotspot locations, a diving suit, a prawn broker, centerpiece wall, wobber wall, and floor decorations. A locked non-constructible bathysphere to the aquarium below. The bathysphere cannot be removed from the player in the house. So this is the diving suit little hotspot that you can obtain. The player can enter the underwater aquarium without this diving suit, but they will wear a basic fishbowl suit like in the quests. So at 63 you can gain the oyster hunter suit, which is a fishbowl plus five bronze bars. Players can open oysters in the aquarium whilst wearing a said suit. Then you've got the mermaid hunter suit at 72 construction. Requiring a fishbowl, five bronze bars, a boiler tank item. Player can additionally open mermaid purses in the aquarium while wearing this suit. And lastly is the gold hunter suit, which is 80 construction. And players can open additional treasure chests within your aquarium whilst wearing this suit. It requires 10 or more fish in the aquarium before it can actually be built, as well as your 80 construction. When entering the bathysphere, you will automatically put on a diving suit. So the other thing in the surface aquarium is this prawn broker, or prawn broker. So this can be built at 63 construction at the beginning, and then 73, and then 81 on all of your upgrades. Fishing and aquarium unlocks are available from the prawn broker in the form of a perk tree. Each unlock is purchased by spending one prawn perk, and there are 14 perks in total. Perks appear in gated patterns of 414141. The player is free to pick from 4 on the first tier, but they need all 4 to unlock the 1 on the next tier. So basically, there'll be a choice of 4 perks on tier 1, and then there'll be 1 perk on tier 2. But in order to unlock tier 2, you need all 4 of perk 1s. And this is how you unlock the prawn perks, apparently. There are more prawn perks than there are unlocks on the perk tree, so the players can have a choice and freedom in how they complete their perks. Any leftover prawn perks can be cashed in for 10k fishing XP at the prawn brokers. The completed perk tree is required for the completion escape. A player needs to have gained all prawn perks for the trimmed comp, and no other comp requirements will be included. The prawn broker allows the player to toggle any passive perks and toggle prawn ball butt drops. So yeah, you can also tweak them if you actually have a prawn item. Once a player hits 99 fishing, they receive 50 noted prawn balls. Tier 1 will allow you to get prawn items that will be more frequent. You can fish without using fishing bait, gain a landmark of your choice for your aquarium, and gain 10 prawn pennies. Tier 2 is gain 1 random golden fish egg. Tier 3 is prawn items will be more frequent. You can fly fish without using feathers. Prawn pennies and prawn pounds last for double the number of fish. And gain 3 diving suit cosmetic overrides for the surface. Tier 4, you get another golden prawn cracker. 
Uh, tier 4 again. Prawn items will be more frequent. You can barbarian fish without using bait or feathers. Gain a great white shark pet and a great white shark for your aquarium. And gain the ability to fish great white shark from shark fishing spots. And lastly is tier 5 which allows you to make sushi. The surface aquarium includes three cosmetic hotspot locations, the centerpiece wall and a wobble wall as well as the floor decoration. These will allow you to customise the surface and look of your aquarium itself. Starting from 64 up to 76 for all of it, or 78 even. So that is pretty much what the plan is going to look like. You can place certain items within inside the aquarium itself underwater and you'll be able to dive in and open the chests and that kind of nonsense whilst you're in there. So basically you can right click the bathosphere in build mode and add elements to the underwater aquarium rather than use hotspots. The player is given full freedom to determine where locations are placed as shown by the interface above. So basically these little things here, you can move them about long wherever. Players have a 16 by 16 layout where the aquarium objects can be placed. As long as the object is not placed on the bathosphere location in the centre of the aquarium, the objects can be placed anywhere. Players choose from a list of objects on the right half of the interface. These objects are then given to the player as default or are gained from the prawn items. So gathering fish then for your aquarium. A fish appears in the aquarium once a player contributes a gold fish egg to the bathosphere during build mode or normal mode. The bathosphere is concepted below, it'll look something along these lines. Each golden fish egg contributed to the aquarium will give the player one prawn perk, as previously noted. The explanations will be given for how saltwater fish can live with freshwater fish, some of the fish are quest locked, but this is intended. The focus of the aquarium will be on a soothing and colourful environment with fish moving naturally and elegantly throughout the area. Yeah. So, underwater aquarium objects, what have we got? The player places objects in their aquarium via the creation tool. Aquarium's objects either come as default or are gained from doing the prawn item nonsense. So the things are as followed. Seaweed can be harvested and exhausted for farming XP and one seaweed item. This will replenish every 12 hours. Kelp can also be harvested and exhausted for farming XP and one kelp item will be replenished every 12 hours. Oysters are another thing. El City Gem Rock Drop Table with addition of oyster pills replenishes every 24 hours. Mermaid purses can contain 20 mahogany or teak planks with a 50-50 chance of each and they replenish every week. And lastly you have the treasure chest which will contain one elite clue scroll and will replenish every month. So yeah. So the other items that were mentioned earlier through the prawn items, the White Wolf Mountain. Fish caught in Catherby give 2% extra XP and you get a greater chance of golden fish eggs in that general region. The Varago statue does the same thing, but for the living rock cabins. The Viking longboat does the same thing, but that's at Otto's Lake, so barbarian fishing. The sea troll egg does the same thing, but that's Piscatorus. And the fishing guild does the same thing, but it's for the fishing guild. So those five items will increase the amount of XP and chance of golden fish eggs. And lastly, you've got the tribal mask, which contains all your Shilo stuff. But it's identical to the others. The other things you can place is the ship prowess ship after coral reef, rocks and cracked pots just to make it look pretty. You can also place a cannon, anger, a big stone head and a plug. The plug is an object which is unlocked for free once all your fish have been added to the aquarium and can be opt to reset your fish within your aquarium, prestige in the aquarium if you will. Various confirmation boxes will ensure that a player really wants to do this. From this point on, each golden fish egg found and contributed to the tank will add the fish to the aquarium and give a medium fishing lamp, but will not offer any prawn perks. Prestigent does not reset your perk tree. Prestigent gives a fishing animation override that changes the colour of the fish in fishing animations to silver. Two prestiges will change them to gold, and inside the aquarium Prestigent once gives a RuneScape logo plug, Prestigent twice will give you a stone of jazz plug. So yeah, if you got relatively low stats and you manage to get all the fish you can then pull the plug to prestige it and each time you get an extra fish you'll gain a medium fishing lamp. I suppose I'll speed her up a little bit. So the rewards I did mention earlier the great white shark uh, from the prawn perks you can get one as a pet as well as putting one inside your aquarium yourself. So the current poll has put passive fish as the winning option for a new fish mechanic. This new fish type is the great white shark and it's associated with sushi. The Great White Shark can be fished from any shark spot with a harpoon. One in two sharks caught will be the Great White. This can be deactivated via the Prawn Broker if needed. The Great White Shark requires a level 80 fishing and 
gives 130 fish and XP per catch. It will require 84 cooking and delivers 212 cooking XP per. Uh, the player can cook the shark to create a cooked great white shark that is slightly better than a regular shark, replenishing 2100 life points. At a agility level of 85 to 99, the player will gain an increased chance of gaining two great white sharks with one catch. At level 99 and 80 strength, a player can fish for these sharks barehanded, gaining 90 strength XP per fish as well as everything else. The raw and cooked versions of the great white shark will be available to everybody. And the other thing you can do with these bad boys is make sushi. So a player can instead choose to keep the great white shark uncooked and use it on seaweed or with kelp to make sushi items with passive benefits. So using the great white shark uncooked with seaweed will create great maki, which requires 84 cooking, give you 150 XP per. It'll initially heal you for 2100, the same as a regular shark, but it'll also give you 3% of prayer regained every 1 second for the next 15 seconds. Or oh, caps at 15. So yeah, 5 seconds. So basically you munch that, you get healed the equivalent of a shark, and then you gain a fair chunk of your prayer back. Not bad, not bad at all. The other thing is using an uncooked great white with kelp, which will create a great gun gun. This is 91 cooking, give you 180 XP per. It'll initially heal you for 1500 HP, which is quite a bit less. And with 150 life points being gained every one second afterwards, up to a cap of 2350. These can also raise your life points by an extra 15%, similar-ish to how rock tails work. So whether or not uh, it's counting the 1500 HP with the 150 per tick afterwards in order to cap at 2350, or whether the 1500 is ignored and it just keeps ticking up until it's healed like 3850, I don't know. But yeah, there you go. Those are the new foods and the great white sharks and stuff and that is the aquarium update in a nutshell you've also got the pet which you can get from the prawn broker and that requires you getting the prawn perks in order to unlock it so yeah that is pretty much it people so there we go those are your new food the player owned house aquarium shit as well all of it all in a nutshell there are going to be some comp breaks along with this so yeah guess i will probably end up having to do this maybe Either way, people, that is your aquarium nonsense. So the only other thing worth mentioning is the patch notes. So graphic-wise, some Aeronauts Direct X environment lighting in the Agarath encounter has been fixed. Minigame-wise, the XP amount listed in the production interface for Fletching Arrows has been corrected. Note that the awarded XP was and is correct and has not changed. An issue where the multi-ingredient or multi-step potions could not be made or only accepted one ingredient has been fixed. Players who donate a large amount of chimes to the goo will now receive an additional reward alongside a piece of the Goo Cosmetic Outfit. An issue where the port's overlay interface would not display when teleporting from the dual arena correctly to a player owned port via the captain's log has been resolved. The hint arrow pointing towards an adventure in the player owned port's tutorial will now correctly point towards adventurers who are located upstairs in the bar. A breakdown of voyages in the captain's log has been made more detailed. Players can now see which adventurers they've met and how many story and clue voyages they've completed for each adventurer. Moving on to your quests and achievements, players can once again consistently use the shortcut to the lower levels in the Lumbridge Catacombs. First mate Davy Boy will now address female characters correctly during the Lunar Diplomacy quest. Moving on to your miscellaneous, Fury Sharks will now correctly protect additional items when outside the wilderness. The correct item will now be broadcast when receiving drops from a Lava Strike Worm. The quick chat to display the current Slayer assignment will now state Lava Strike Worms instead of Wildy Worms, while on your relative assignment. The level calculation that determines access to teleporting via the wilderness has been corrected. Most teleports will now only function in up to level 20 wilderness, with some items such as the Ambio Glory functioning up to level 30. It is once again possible to build adrenaline via Nexus Majors. Missing blocking Missing Blocking What? Missing blocking has been added to the wall in Calgarian Dungeon. Alright. Basically, me standing in the wall while fighting Calgarian demons should no longer be a thing. Blocking's been added to all of the wooden supports for the fence surrounding the rogue's castle. A typo in the survivor title unlock description's been fixed. The cost for hard leather boots has been lowered the, to better reflect the cost of other hard leather equipment. No! The NPCs added for the Hattie Wolf event has been removed. And last but not least, you've got the ninja fixes. 
Players can now activate Excalibur as well as the Enhanced Excalibur from their inventories, and players will now automatically be given any rewards obtained from the Daemonheim task set upon entering a dungeon. The click area and model of the Skull Slope on the Abertol Agility course has been updated. It is now possible to cast Death Swiftness as well as Sunshine without a target. And players can now chip teleport to house tablets to redirect to Privthinus. And farming patch locations and their borders have been updated. So there we go. Those are all of the updates. Those are your patch notes plus the aquarium goodness. And yeah, the new quest. Which is up on the channel if you need the guide for it. Either way, that is pretty much it. Only other thing worth mentioning, there will be a live stream on the 24th, which I do believe is actually today, at 4pm UTC, where they'll showcase the aquarium on the Twitch channel. So if you want more information and to be able to actually see it visually, yeah, you can go check out the stream, which will be happening later on today. Either way, people, that is pretty much it. Hopefully you find this useful, and you've now all been informed. Good times. So with that said, catch you all later. Have a good one.